Hello and welcome to the beautiful Isle of Purbeck Golf Club on the south coast of England. My name is Philip Bonfanti and I'm a professional golf instructor. Today's topic is all about turning your slice into a high draw. I am convinced that even if you've spent many years trying to hit a draw, you've had many lessons and so far you've not succeeded, I do believe that if you apply a few sound principles, you should be able to do this in a very short amount of time. Before we do go ahead, I would like to take this opportunity to thank my good friends, Mike Bennett and Andy Plummer, who have taught me so much and who I truly believe have revolutionized the way golf is taught across the world. So let's get started. Let's turn your slice into that shot you've always wanted, the high draw. Let's do it. Let's start by first differentiating between the slice shot and the draw shot. So on the left hand side we have a slice, so for a right hander it's a shot that's curving excessively from left to right. And on the right hand side we have a draw shot, which is a shot that starts to the right of the target before coming back towards the target. So the real question is, what causes these two shots? So if we look purely at the moment of impact, and if I scroll these pictures, images to the left, so this was the shot there on the right that created the draw, and this on the left is the shot that created the slice. So what we have here is the club face marked in red, the club path marked in blue, and the target line marked in gray. So this is strictly at the moment of impact in the left hand picture where I hit a slice my club face was pointing ever so slightly to the right of the target line. But my club path, which is the direction uh, my club head was traveling in at impact, was from out to in. It was a glancing blow across the ball here, illustrated by the blue line, and so the ball sliced to the right. On the right hand side, where I hit a draw, you can see the club face again this time was ever so slightly to the right, but the club path was moving further to the right, illustrated by the blue line, and that created the draw shot. So if we have a look at the numbers for these two shots, we'll see that in fact, both of them had the club face open to the target at the moment of impact of one degree. So these club faces were both pointing to the right of target at impact. But in one on the left, because the club path was in this case 8.8 .8 degrees from out to in, the ball sliced because the club path was going to the left of the club face. In the right hand side picture, the club path was 3.6 degrees in to out, it's a positive number, and so the club face was closed to this path and so curved to the left. Now if we look further at these numbers, you'll see that the face to path number, which is the differential between the two, here was 9.8, and so that led to more curvature on the shot, whereas on the right hand side picture, the face to path or the difference between the two was just 2.6 degrees, and so there was less curve on the shot. So it all really boils down to learning to swing from in to out. If you can achieve that, you can hit the draw shots. Now, furthermore, as you learn to hit more and more into out in the beginning, you can exaggerate it. Imagine you hit 10 degrees into out. There's a very good chance that in just a handful of shots, you would learn to match that face to that path so that the ball would start curving to the left. You wouldn't keep it open to the path. And it's very important that you learn to do this because if you're a typical slicer with the club path significantly going from out to in, it makes your approach into the ball typically very steep. It means you tend to run out of loft on the longer clubs as your club face points excessively to the left. Hence the need so often nowadays for hybrids in the bag. And with the short clubs, it leads to higher shots as there's a distinct lack of compression, there's too much loft presented to the ball at impact as the club shaft is backing up. 
So imagine the analogy of a hose. If it's pointed too low, the ball will fire at an angle such that it falls down to the ground too soon. If the hose is angled too high, it will get straight up into the sky before coming down near vertical. You want it ideally somewhere in between the two. If you want to hit the highest shots while still maintaining good distance, you need to do that by learning to make your path from in to out and hitting a draw. It will also considerably add to this potential speed you're able to generate. So not to say that a fade goes any less far than a draw, because it doesn't, but the mechanics in the body of how you create a draw invariably lead to better impact conditions and longer shots for the average player. Now let's see what other moves you can do to learn to swing from in to out. We'll make it our goal by the end of this video, you will know how to make your bar from in to out. You'll be able to go on a practice ground. You'll be able to do it yourself. You will hit some draws, I promise you. So we have seen that in order to create a draw shot, you need to have an in to out path rather than an out to in path. So if I just illustrate that on the ground here with the aid of these sticks. So the yellow stick here represents the target line. So that's the direction the golfer is trying to hit the ball towards. Then the club path is represented by this red stick. So we are trying to get the club head to move from in to out, not from out to in. And another way to think about this is that for the golfer, everything that is behind the golfer is in everything that is in front of the golfer is out. So from behind to in front is from in to out. From in front to behind is out to in. So we have our target line in yellow, our club path in red, and the club face needs to be pointed somewhere to the right of the target line, but not as far to the right as the club path. So these are the conditions we are trying to achieve for our draw shots. So the question becomes, what is it that you might be doing that is causing your path to be oriented like this, from out to in? The first thing I'd like you to think about is your ball position. So if you imagine this circle here, this bottom half of the circle represents the trajectory of your club head in miniature form during your downswing. So the club head is moving downwards and outwards all the way to the lowest point, after which it starts coming upwards and inwards. So if you have the ball in a position on this circle that is too far forwards on this portion of the circle, by the time the club head comes to the ball, it's already traveling on the upwards and inwards portion of that circle and that is the out to in path. Now if you have the ball further back on this circle, then your club head at the time of impact is still traveling down and out, which is the in to out path. Now if I change sides to represent that differently, you have this side of the circle as the club head is traveling towards the low point, which is the in to out, and it's only once the low point is reached that the club head starts moving from out to in. So the first check, very simply, is your ball position. If your ball position is too far forwards, all things equal, this might well lead to your out to in path. So make sure you position the ball slightly back. Just as a reference point though, I would say you want all your ball positions to be located somewhere between the lead shoulder uh, for your driver, for your longest club, and say the base of the neck on the left hand side on the lead side for your shortest club. So don't exaggerate by having the ball considerably back in your stance. This would be for a more specialized purpose. But first thing to check, ball position. The next thing I'd like you to consider is your weight distribution. So if I represent the arc on that the club head is traveling in on the ground via these two sticks, it would be something like this. So the club head is moving from in to out all the way until the lowest point of the arc and then it travels from out to in, up and in. So if for whatever reason you make a golf swing and your weight distribution shifts back and stays back, what you're effectively doing 
is shifting this low point on the ground to this position. And so the ball ends up in such a position that by the time you get to it, the club head is traveling from out to in. If alternately you have your weight distribution moving forward throughout your golf swing, then what you are doing is shifting this low point more forwards. And so the ball, when you hit it, is being hit on the down and out portion of this golf swing, which is what's going to con contribute to that into out path. So just to give you some guidance with reference to the weight moving forwards, what you're actively trying to do is throughout your swing, actually shift your hips laterally towards the target. So let's say it's set up, your weight distribution was 55, 45 towards the lead side. At the top of the backswing, you'd be trying to do 60, 40, 70, 30, 80, 20, 90, 10, and 95, 5 on the lead side of the finish. The best players in the world all have their hips shifting towards the target throughout their swings. At the moment of impact, their hips have all shifted as a rough guideline between four and say eight inches towards the target. So a lot of the players will be within those boundaries. So the second thing, make sure your weight is shifted forwards throughout your swing. A really good image I like is that of swinging in a barrel, but obviously you are not swinging in a barrel. You are coming exploding through that barrel during your downswing. So have your weight forward as you strike the ball to bring your low point more forwards on the ground so that you hit the ball on the down and out, on the in to out portion of that swing arc. The third element I'd like you to check with regards to what's creating your out to in path is your handle location. So what I mean by that is at impact, do you have your handle located forwards like this leaning towards the target or do you have it leaning backwards like this away from the target so as your handle leans forwards that's going to promote the in to out path as your handle leans backwards that's going to promote the out to in path now on this note i think it is very important to make the point that in order to hit that draw shot you do not want to be actively trying to rotate your forearms in an effort to close the face for the moment of impact. And the reason for that is the following. If you are trying to roll your forearms in this manner through the ball to create the draw, what you are in fact doing is creating a situation where the club head is overtaking the hands and this means that you are actually swinging now from the wrists rather than using the entire main lever of the golf swing, which is the left arm and club. As you swing, start swinging from the wrists, your low point starts to move backwards. And so again, you start hitting the ball on the out to in section of that circle on the ground. The other thing is we have said that for a draw shot, you need to have a club face pointing to the right of the target for a right hander, so open to the target. If you're actively trying to close the face like this, this is much more compatible, in fact, the close face, with starting the ball to the left of the target. So if you start the ball to the left of the target and then curves further to the left, that in reality would put you in a whole world of trouble, not something you want on the golf course. So you are trying to keep that handle forward with the club face more open. And if we also think of that movement where you would start to roll your forearms, you're obviously not doing it just in that one four thousandth of a second at impact you are actually starting to do it from the top of the backswing. So if I'm in the top of a backswing position here and I start to roll my forearms, what's happening to the club head? It's actually starting to move to a position in front of me. And so that's leading to an out to in swing path, the opposite of what you desire in order to hit that draw shot. So make sure that you keep your handle forwards as you're striking the ball. And that is quite simply the way the golf club is designed. If we sit this golf club here flat on the ground, you will see it's leaning towards the target. It's not leaning away from the target. So that's the third thing I'd like you to monitor. The fourth thing I would like you to check 
is your hand path during the backswing. Now very often, under the pretense of creating width, golfers are told to make a backswing where they take the hands and the club head back in a straight line down the target line as far as possible. And this often leads to a scenario where the golfer at the top of his backswing has the hands high above the right shoulders. And this is the start of making an out to in downswing. What you want to try and do is try and swing backwards, upwards and inwards throughout the course of your backswing, such that when you do reach the top of your backswing, you should be able to see the hands are, from your perspective, somewhat to the left of my right shoulder here. And that's going to give you the best possible chance of then approaching the golf ball and that in to out path. Now to give you some further details here, simply when your club shaft is parallel to the ground, you would tend to see the hands towards the belt. When the left arm is parallel to the ground, you would tend to see the hands towards the base of the bicep. Where you wouldn't see them is towards the middle of the chest. Now, sometimes, even with the best intentions, golfers can make this move well to start with, and the club head goes backwards, upwards, inwards for a short while, but reached this point, the elbows of the golfer start to separate and the club head rises on this vertical path okay now this is invariably caused by the fact that that golfer mistakenly believes that the right knee needs to stay flexed and fixed as solid as a stone throughout the course of a backswing now this isn't the case we want the hips to turn to allow the shoulders to turn so that the hands can keep going backwards upwards inwards if the hips don't turn the shoulders won't be able to make a full shoulder turn you'd be working outside the realms of normal human being suppleness. Often at severe detriment. I can think of a number of players who do this who are recurrently injured. Okay, So backwards, upwards, inwards, facilitated by the straightening of the rear knee, the bending of the lead knee, which is allowing your hips to turn on a tilted angle, which allows you to turn your shoulders further which allows your hands to keep going backwards, upwards, inwards. And from there, you will have your best chance of making that into out path. Now, sometimes what you see is golfers doing this by starting to let the right elbow, the rear elbow, flex and go behind the rib cage like so. Now, what happens from this position is here the right elbow ends up in a very high position. And from there, the golfer starts to push on the way down and this pushes on the shaft and sends it to that outside to in motion. So very important as you do this that you get some external rotation of the right shoulder. Feel like the elbows are squeezing together as tightly as possible. Don't let that rear elbow move away from the lead elbow. So if you set up at a dress and you had say six inches between the elbows, you would try and maintain that six inches between the elbows at the top of the backswing. And you would make sure that this arm doesn't effectively flex behind your shirt seam. So that is the fourth thing I want you to check. Your hand path, you want it to go inwards to facilitate the in to out path. You don't want it to go straight upwards. The fifth element I'd like you to check is how your lead knee, how your left knee here moves during your downswing. So very common, at the top of the backswing, golfers are told that they need to turn. And what they do is they start to straighten the lead knee like this, which has the effect of throwing the hips backwards, which has the effect of throwing the weight distribution backwards. And again, this causes that out to in path that we don't want in order to hit our draw shot. In fact, I would argue that we never want it because not only does it lead to that out to in draw shot, but it also leads to an inability to hit the ground in the right place and leads to very severe potential problems or difficulties in actually hitting the ball solidly. So what the lead knee should be doing, in fact, is maintaining the flex it built during the backswing and keep it flexed until roughly this point when the club shaft is parallel to the ground. And when you see me here, you'll see that my lead knee 
is outside my lead ankle. And so from this position, arrived at this point, it's now and only now that I'm actually allowed to start to jump up and extend. So you need to make sure that your lead knee is flexing forwards, staying down and in front of the ankle for long enough before you start your extension and jumping up off the ground. So the lead knee is that fifth element I really want you to check. Make sure you're not straightening it too soon, which makes the hips move backwards and turn too quickly, which sends the club head from out to in. Make sure you're keeping that lead knee moving down and forwards and have the extension of that foot later. One thing you should see at the end of your swing, very important here, is that when you finish, you will have felt like your belt buckle will have risen. So say it was 35 inches from the ground at setup. It's now 37 inches from the ground, say. You'll feel like you're squeezing your posterior, your buttocks, puffing out your chest. I often make the analogy of it's like being a peacock. Be proud of your game, be proud of your golf, and to this position. But this doesn't happen until at least this point in the downswing. Don't do this extension piece too soon. We have now seen some of the elements that contribute to that out to in path and how we want to change them to create an in to out path. Now let's discuss the setup. So the first thing I'd like you to do is make sure that your lead hand, you have the grip positioned under the heel pad of that hand. So if you take your last three fingers off the grip, you should still be able to hold that club in position. If you have it too much through the cup of the hand and you try to do the same thing, it would simply fall out. So you want to make sure that the heel pad of the hand is on top of the grip. From there, if we start from the ground, I want you to set up with the toes turned slightly outwards. The ball position would be forwards, but as we've seen, not excessively forwards, but we'd be starting to hit on the out to end portion of the circle. So a good reference point here would be to take your ball position, not in relation to the stance like is so commonly taught, but in relation to your lead shoulder. And the reason I say this is that the stance, according to your width of stance, the same ball position could be, in fact, very different. And when we make the golf swing, the primary lever is the left arm club. So we are, in fact, swinging around this lead shoulder. So technically, the lowest point of your swing should occur somewhat underneath that lead shoulder. So we have the toes out, knees slightly out, have the left arm and club form a straight line. And from there, we would make sure that we shuffle our hips slightly to the right of target. So make sure that your weight is forward. And again, I would say there's no real amount that is correct or incorrect, it is simply the principle. The more your weight is forward, the more potential ability you will have to make an into out swing path. So if you're struggling with your into out swing path, I would even say start your swing with literally 90% to 100% of your weight forwards and swing from that position because that will start to create that path for you. From this down the line view, make sure you have your feet roughly parallel to your target line. You don't need to turn your feet to the right in order to create this draw shot. So feet parallel to your target line, your handle from this view is also somewhat upwards as well as forwards. And this is going to help create that open face and the raising of the shaft is going to help create that in throughout path. The hips, the shoulders can be aligned slightly to the right. And again, the amount will depend on how easy it is for you to create that into out path. If you find it really difficult, don't hesitate to have them closed such that they're pointing a long way to the right. Again, this is going to maximize your ability to swing on that into out path. The right forearm, make sure it is tucked in and under in this position. You don't want a really high forearm when trying to create that into out path. Make sure it is rolled forwards and under the lead arm, like so.
now that we have seen some of the key principles in play, let's try and figure out what we can do on the range to try and work on these elements. So I am set up here on range and I have my target marked out by that red post and these yellow sticks indicating a straight line down towards it. So I'm setting up, I'm making sure my weight is forwards, my handle's forwards and importantly here, I'm going to try and make sure that I start my ball to the right of my target line. So I am going to set up my club face slightly to the right of that target line. As I make my backswing, I'm going to make sure my hands work inwards behind me. And I'm not going to do very big shots to begin with, just very small shots, but really focusing on starting them to the right hand side of the target. And I don't know how you can see this on the camera, but we'll have a look on the Trackman data later. That ball was curving back to the left hand side, even on quite a short shot like that. Very important that I slide as much as possible and not turn. So again here, the important things are the principles. And so understand that very often golfers have an excessive amount of turn and not enough lateral motion towards the target. That's what leads to the out to in path and the slice shots. So make sure that you have a sufficient amount of slide during your golf swing. Now hookers on the other hand, they often have the right amount of slide, but they don't have a corresponding amount of turn. So you obviously do need to have both throughout a golf swing. But if you're suffering with an out to in path, there's a very, very good chance you're not shifting your hips, you're not sliding for long enough. So try and just envision maybe a stick on the ground here and during your downswing, you're not trying to turn, you are trying to slide the length of that stick. So if I have this next shot focusing very much on that, so weight forwards, handle forwards, club face to the right, shoulders a little bit to the right. I'm gonna make my hands go in I'm really going to concentrate on sliding as opposed to turning. So again, I send that ball out to the right. I will do that again, focusing entirely on the slide, not the turn. And those balls are starting to come back slightly, even with such a short swing. One thing you'll notice is when I finish these shots, you'll see very little gap here between the knees. My right heel is almost touching the ground still. My hips have moved this way, which has dragged the foot inwards and the version of the right foot. I haven't made the heel spin out. So very important from this view, hands in, weight stays forwards, handle forwards, and you're trying to start the ball to the right. And again, it doesn't have to be very big at all. It can be a really short swing. Even on that one, I can see the right to left curve. Now, if we have a look from this face on view, this is what it will look like with regards to the hip sliding forwards. So left arm club straight line, hips forwards, And you can see how my hips are really in that forward position. The other thing you'll notice is how I was extended. So I didn't finish in this flexed position like you so commonly see. I finished with my hips tucked underneath me, my pelvis as upwards as possible, so my belt level, level's risen, my chest is puffed out to the sky, my head is back in the middle of my stance while my hips are forwards. Now this extension piece is really important to help the shafts keep raising through the ball instead of lowering through the ball. So as the shaft rises, that keeps your path from in to out. As your shaft lowers, that shifts your path from out to in. So if I do it again, weight forwards, handle forwards, club face to the right of the target, but it's going to be close to the path and this is going to be helped by my wrist being in flexion like this, which is going to close the face of the path. And they're starting to the right and coming back to the left. Again, when you look at me from this view, 
you'll notice when I finish that the right heel is closer to the target than the right toe. A good indicator of sufficient slide as opposed to excessive turn. Feet out, handle forwards, weight forwards, hands in. I can feel the right leg straightening as I'm doing this. And I'm most definitely not going to allow myself to stay in flexion and have my head shift back behind the ball in an effort to create power. Absolutely not. I'm going to keep it forwards where it was. And I have my high draw shot. So, super important. Weight forwards, handle forwards, hands in, facilitated by the straining of the right leg which allows the hips, allows the shoulders to keep turning so the hands can make that move inwards with depth. And through the shot, make sure the arms are nice and straight in this position. Don't let them fold. Don't have that typical chicken wing position, which again would make the club head move across the ball. It would make it move across the ball. Make sure the arms remain straight. Very good checkpoint here would be to have the elbows as close together as possible. So if I do one more here, and I'm going to really focus on the elbows at the finish. Nice draw, and you can see how close they are. So if I swivel round, that's where my elbows are. So they started about five, four inches apart, and they're still that same distance apart. The difference, the opposite would be going Make sure you can do this on some sh small shots. Gradually build it up. Adhere to these principles and I guarantee you will start to make that ball start to the right and curve back to the left thanks to that in to out swing path. With today's technology, it's very easy to have a smartphone, a tripod, to put them in place and to film yourself and have some very specific reference points as to what it is you're trying to do to turn that slice into a draw. So here I've asked Byron Hutchison, who is currently training to become a member of the British PGA, uh, to demonstrate a high weak cut and a draw. So this is the weak cut. So his club path was out to in nearly 8 degrees. His face was considerably open to the path. And this shot started to the right and curved further to the right. His draw shot, he played, his club path was into out nearly 5 degrees. His club face was open to the target but close to the path. And so he hit that nice little draw shot. Now if we have a look at what those shots actually look like. So we have the slice on the left and the draw on the right. So with the slice shot... We'll notice that the hands go back in an outwards fashion. So instead of moving inwards, they're moving outwards. So if I just mark the hands here with a little red line, you'll see the hands are moving off to the right as we look at the screen. If we stop the swing when the left arm's parallel to the ground here, we'll see that the left arm is pointing straight back at the camera and the hands are sort of to the left hand side of the chest. Noticed the legs have done very little, so there's very little change of flex. The hips haven't turned, so they're still relatively level to the ground. All very different to what we're going to see on the right-hand side for the draw shot. Again, I'll mark that little line on the hands, and you'll see the hands move much more inwards, and you see the knees start to change flex. I'm going to stop at the same point in time, left arm parallel to the ground, and this time we can see that the left arm isn't pointing back at the camera, but it's pointing to the left of the camera. And the hands are almost to the base of the bicep. So they've worked much more inwards. The right hip now is higher than the left hip. The hips are turning. So considerably different. If we keep going to the top of the swing here, you'll see Byron finishes with the hands above the right shoulder. Whereas on the draw shot, he finishes with the hands to the left of the shoulder. So what I mean specifically about this is this is the line of the shoulders. This is a line of the shoulders, so on that draw shot, the hands to the left as we look at the screen of the shoulders. If we keep moving downwards and we get back to that left arm parallel to the ground, 
from the slice shots you see here the club shaft intersects the body at the shoulder even slightly above the shoulder whereas here on the right hand side it's going to be somewhat more through the humerus through the bicep of the right arm keep going here the club shaft traces above the right forearm and when we stop the club parallel to the ground the club head here appears to the right hand side of the hands keep going on this picture and the club shaft traces the forearm much better is even somewhat underneath it stop at the same point in time club shaft parallel to the ground and this time you see the club head is to the left of the hands you can also see the difference in the amount of rotation there is if you look at the lower body you'll see a lot of the left leg in the slice picture and much less so in the right hand side picture so as he comes into the ball, you see the inside-out approach compared to the outside-in approach for the slice. And it finishes here with the arms really flexing compared to the arms much straighter on this picture. And if you look at the club head here, it would appear to be um, somewhat open, somewhat unrolled compared to say, the left-hand side picture. But this is irrelevant in the sense that all that counts is that one two thousandths of a second right at the moment of impact and providing that club face was open as target and close to the path you will get the draw shot and through to the end if we now have a look from the other view and we look at the face on view And I'll make them both slightly bigger. To a better view. So already on the uh, left hand side, the slice picture, you can see his weight is more back than in the right picture. So he has more weight towards his trail leg. As he makes his back swing, the hips, shoulders, everyone's going to move back. So over the top of the back swing, you can see his uh, knee, his trail knee is the outside of the ankle there's been a sway a shift off the ball whereas on the right hand side picture you'll see everyone has stayed much more centered so you'll see a pretty nice straight line here from the ankle all the way up to the right shoulder whereas here you've got much more of this curved look so the weight is more forward to the draw here than it is for the slice at the top of the backswing If we keep going down, you'll see the weight never goes fully forward, so the hips always remain behind the lead ankle. Whereas on the draw shot, he's going to be making much more of a shift, and the hips are gradually going to go more and more forwards. So that they end up much more on the ankle, and even in front of the ankle. The club shaft, as he hits the ball for the slice, is somewhat perpendicular to the ground not leaning forward as much as on the draw shot. Coming through, you see the arms flex a little bit, you see how much roll there is in the forearms, and you see this overall flexed position where the chest is pointing much more down to the ground as opposed to the very straight arms position with very little roll here where you see the chest looks like it's much more extended and pointing to the sky. Notice the difference in the level of the belt. It's much lower in the left-hand side picture, and it's risen in the right-hand side picture. These are good reference points for you to have when you're filming yourself. As you get closer to doing this, you can add more and more precision. But to begin with, these are simple things. Bring the hands inwards more on the backswing, facilitated by the knees change and flex, and keep the hips pushing linearly, fo linearly forwards Run the downswing with the arms staying straight and finishing in this extended position. Here we are going to have a look at some of the pictures of amateur golfers uh, before and afters showing what they've done to go from an out to in swing path to an in to out swing path. And as you look at these pictures, you really should start to see some recurring themes emerging and see some patterns. So when we have a look at this slide here, you have a golfer with a left picture. He was swinging out to in with a driver by four and a half degrees. And in the right picture, he's swinging into out 2.1 degrees.
And you can see how he's done it, essentially by having the weight more forwards. You can see the left arm and club in the right picture form a nice straight line, and the ball is slightly back of the left shoulder. So weight forwards, handle forwards, lead into that into outswing path. On this slide, you see a golfer where the knees weren't changing flex sufficiently. On the left hand picture, the hands weren't moving inwards enough and so he was cutting across the ball and you can see that by doing those changes changing the flex in the knees making the hands more work more inwards during the backswing he's able to create that 5.3 degrees into outswing path and this is common if you just look at these pictures top of the backswing same thing a bit further on so this is the top of the backswing this golfer has made his swing path go from 12.7 degrees out to in to 3.9 into out by having the hands work more inwards. So the key thing to look at here is the knees again and when you look at the position on the right hand side of the top of the backswing the hands are to the left of the right shoulder not directly above it. Again similar thing and again similar thing so it's, it's a recurrent thing the more you can get your hands to go towards the base of that right bicep, the more you can get the hands to go backwards, upwards, inwards throughout the course of the backswing, the more you will have a chance of swinging from in to out. If we look at this downswing picture now, you can see the goal from the left is starting to turn excessively rather than slide, so you can see how the shoulders on the left hand picture are almost square to the target already, whereas on the draw shot picture, the in to out swing path, his shoulders are still pointing to the right of the target. Here, if we have a look at the moment just at impact, we have a golfer with a path almost 9 degrees out to in, and he did that by having uh, the arms flexing, the shaft leaning back, not enough weight forwards, and on the right hand side picture where he's learned to really slide the hips forwards, he's squeezing the elbows together, the shaft is more forwards, he's able to get that nice 5.8 degrees into our path. Here we have an example of a golfer on the left, where you can see the handle really lowering through the ball as opposed to raising. So see how the handle is disappearing, belt height on that left picture. On the right hand picture, the handle is going to disappear just above the belt. And again, this is something typical that you want to see. If you're starting to play those in to out shots, you want the right picture. Here, another example of a golfer sliding the hips more forwards. And because the hips are more forwards, because the turn is uh, more gradual in relation to the sliding forwards of the hips, it's changing the club path of this golfer, going from 6.9 out to into 4.2 into out. And just one last one to look at, again here a golfer who's staying flexed forwards on the left hand side, so you can see how the neck is tilted down towards the ground, the centre of the shoulders is almost in front of the soft shoulder of the hips, so closer to the target than the centre of the hips. Compared to the right hand picture, he's got this uh, nice extension in the neck, the chest is more forwards up to the sky, the belt's more forwards, you can see how the right foot has started to bank in because of the linear motion of the hips and less overtaken as far as the handle. So you start to see these patterns happen again and again and you start to associate these pictures with different club paths. So weight forwards, handle forwards, the changing flex of the knees, the hands working inwards, the hips going forwards, the extension, the arm straight, all those things you'd start to associate with the in to out path. We have therefore seen all the elements you need to turn your slice into a high draw. Now I'm going to carry out my 100% chance of a draw shot. There is no way under any circumstances this shot could do anything other than curve to the left for me as a right-hander. So my 100% chance of a draw shot, I'm going to set up with my weight the most forwards, my handle the most forwards, so much so that as I look down at my hands I can almost see as though they're in front of my lead foot. I'm going to turn my hips, turn my shoulders to the right. This is going to even before I started, start to straighten my rear leg. So I've made room for my hands to work inwards the most and so that I can keep them going there. I'm going to really extend through the shot, keeping my arms nice and straight. 
doing all these things the most, there is a 0% chance that the ball does not draw. Let's give it a go. And indeed it didn't. It started to the right of target and came back towards the target. You have everything you need. Get practicing. Let me know how you get on. See you soon.